Good morning and welcome to Church Online at Christ Lutheran Church in Mustang, Oklahoma. We're really glad that you're joining us. It's the fifth Sunday in Lent and the gospel reading is, is one of the great ones and so I'm going to be talking about that. Um, I'm also going to include a, a short children's message. It's not in the bulletin but just a, a heads up on that. Um, that was actually at my wife's suggestion and I thought, you know what, that would be pretty good to have a, have a children's message. We also have um, some singers and some musicians here. Some of the feedback from last week was was if we could have some songs included, and so we have some well-known hymns. I'm going to pray, and then we're going to sing our opening hymn. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this day. We know that you are with us in the time of distress, the time of mourning, and that you mourn with us. And not only that, you give us the hope of everlasting life. For you are the life eternal. Be with us as we worship, as you promised to do. Be with those at their homes, with their families that are worshiping this morning, as you promised to be where two or more are gathered in your name. In Christ's name, amen. Our opening hymn is 686, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. We sing. Streams of love. 
We begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open my lips, and and my my mouth shall shall declare your your praise. praise. Glory Glory be to the the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as as it was was in the beginning, beginning, is now, and and will be forever. forever. Amen. The Lord has redeemed his people. O come, come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it. And his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory Glory be be to the the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, beginning, is now, and and will be forever. forever. Amen. The Lord has redeemed his people. O O come, come, let let us worship him. Our psalm of the day is Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, that you may be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than the watchman for the morning, more than the watchman for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is plentiful redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. Our reading, our gospel reading today is from John 11. When Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. But Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on account of the people standing around that they may believe that you sent me. When he said these things, when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man who had died came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips and his face wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. So the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered the council and said, What are we to do? For this man performs many signs. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him, and the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. But one of them, Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all, nor do you understand that it is better for you that one man should die for the people. Not that the whole nation should perish. He did not say this of his own accord, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the nation. And not for the nation only, but also to gather into 
one, the children of God who, had, who are scattered abroad. So from that day on, they made plans to put him to death. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to, to God. God. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But, but now, now in these last days, days he, he has, has spoken, spoken to us by his son. I'm going to do the children's message right now. So children at home, you've been at home now for a couple of weeks, and that first week probably was fine because that's spring break, but now it's getting a little weird, maybe a little odd, and, and mom and dad might seem a little afraid, especially if they're having to work from home right now. They might seem a little bit more on edge, a little tense, like something is going on. Or you yourselves might be aware of what's going on, and you might be scared. You might sense that mom and dad are scared. I don't want to tell you something. It's okay to be scared right now. It's perfectly normal to feel scared right now. There is something out of the ordinary going on. And it has adults scared. And it might have you scared. Jesus went to his friend, Lazarus. Lazarus had been sick for a while now, and he had died. And Lazarus had two sisters, Mary and Martha. And one of them, she was very upset with Jesus. Because she had known that if Jesus had come when Lazarus was sick, before he died, Jesus could have made Lazarus well. So she's upset with him. She says, look, I still believe you are who you are, but I'm a little mad with you. And Jesus, he goes to the tomb of where Lazarus is at. He says, hey, you know, open, open the door. And then they're like, Lord, in, in the King James, Lord, he stinketh. He stinketh. In other words, he's very stinky. He's been dead for four days. There's, there's an odor. Jesus says, I'm going to show you something amazing. You think that Lazarus' only hope was while he was alive? That was the only way I could make him well? I'm going to show you the true power of God, that I am the resurrection and the life. And he calls Lazarus out of the tomb. Lazarus is made alive again. He's made whole again. He's made healthy even though adults around you might be scared, even though you might be scared, whether it's of the dark or of, of the coronavirus or of thunder, God is greater than those things. He's more powerful than those things. And he says that he is with you in the midst of the most scary times. So trust in him. Tell him that you're scared and trust in him. In Jesus' name, amen. We sing our hymn of the day, 735, Have No Fear, Little Flock. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We all know the story. Jesus is with his disciples, and he gets word that his good friend Lazarus is ill in hopes that Jesus will go, but Jesus doesn't. And finally, Lazarus dies, and Jesus waits a little bit, and then he tells his disciples, we need to go. Lazarus has fallen asleep, and his disciples think, well, that's good, because sleeping is the best cure for an illness. And even today, when you're sick, what do the doctors say? Get lots of rest. Allow your body to try and heal. They didn't have antibiotics back then. They didn't have antivirals back then. They had a few kind of home-brewed recipes. Doctors might have some different things, but by and large, there were no cures when you got sick, especially deadly sick. Does that sound familiar? And the more I read these passages uh, as we go through Lent, the more I'm like, wow, uh, (laughs) here's a whole new meaning on this I, I never thought we would have. So Jesus, he goes finally to Bethany. It's a few miles off, just like Bethany is a few miles off from here, but he's talking about the the Bethany over in in Israel. Mary and Martha are the sisters of Lazarus. And Mary, she stays home, but Martha, she goes out. And she's upset. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. That's a bold accusation to make. She's basically saying, you don't care enough. You didn't care enough. Now imagine saying that to Jesus. We're we're indoctrinated. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. And yet, what are the stages of grief? One of them is anger. And when people die, especially when people die before their quote-unquote time, a a young person, a child, a beloved spouse, you see anger. You see anger directed at the Lord. Why did my loved one die? Why did my friend die? Why did that person die? Why are we suffering under the effects of of a pandemic so we can't gather together in person? Why is there a disease with no cure that can overwhelm our health care system and cause people that don't even have it to die because there will be no space to treat them or they won't receive the adequate care that they need? Why is there cancer? Why are there car wrecks? All these questions, and you see people get very, very angry. Just like Martha. But even in her anger, Martha said, But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. And Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. And Martha, being ever faithful, said, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And then something profound. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Right there, Jesus is claiming to be more than just a prophet, more than just somebody who God will listen to. He is the resurrection and the life. He is the Lord. He is God. And he asks, Martha, do you believe this? Do you believe that I'm God? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ. That's the Messiah, the chosen one of God, the Son of God who is coming into the world. That title, Son of God, doesn't mean the same thing as we are all children of God. It is that very title that gets Christ crucified later on. To take the title Son of God like he is doing, 
to proclaim him the Son of God, like Martha is saying, is to say that he is God. So they go to the tomb, and Jesus, he prays. This is after the whole ordeal, ordeal of the he stinketh. And he prays, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And then he lets everybody know, I'm praying this not, I'm praying this for no other reason than that you would know that the Father he- hears me because you are about to see the glory of God. And he raises up his voice. You get the sense like he's talking to the crowd and then he turns to the tomb and he raises up his voice, Lazarus, come out. And the man who had died came out. It's dramatic. It's this event that just later on people are going to be proclaiming and shouting about when Jesus enters into Jerusalem, the triumphal entry that we celebrate on Palm Sunday. They're going to be gathered there because they heard that he raised Lazarus from the dead. Now, as I said in my children's message, we live in a scary time. We don't have the infinite knowledge of God. We don't know why things happen. Outside of that, we live in a sinful world and we suffer under its effects. So there is cancer. There is untimely death because all death is untimely. There are tragedies in our lives. There are hurts and there are angers. And we contribute to that ourselves. For we are sinful. Our sin nature tempts us and causes us to commit actual sins. We might not murder anybody physically, but we hate them. We deride them, call them a fool, wish that they would die. We live in a sinful world, full of sinful people, all suffering under the effects of sin. And Christ presents us with the binary choice. Do you believe that he is the resurrection and the life? Or do you believe that he is powerless, a fraud? Somebody to just simply dismiss. The Pharisees chose the tack that Jesus was a liar. And it would be better for him to die. Because their nation, their way of life, was at stake. And even though they came to that conclusion, even though Caiaphas, the high priest, said it was better that one man should die then the whole nation perish. They're actually prophesying exactly what God was doing. Martha believed. I hope you believe that Christ is the resurrection and the life because that gives a peace and a comfort and a hope beyond all understanding. That in the midst of the scariest times of life, when you are on your own deathbed, you know that there is one greater who has defeated your sin, who has defeated your death by taking it upon himself. And even though you die, yet you shall live. That is the promise of the gospel. That is the work of Christ. That is the celebration of Easter. That's why we gather on Sundays, because every Sunday is a mini Easter. Christ has conquered death. 
and he has given you life everlasting. So it's okay to be scared. It's okay to be angry at the callousness and sinfulness of this world. Because we have a hope that is greater than those. And we know that the final answer is this, that Christ shall come again. And that sin and death and the devil will be utterly destroyed. And then at the last The words of Job will be ours, that in our own flesh, with our own eyes, we shall see our Redeemer standing upon the earth. We will have life with him. In Christ's name, amen. We continue with the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers, to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins, And the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high, shall break upon us to shine on on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Normally at this time, if we were gathering in person, we'd be collecting our gifts, tithes, and offerings. Obviously, we cannot do that. We have set up, though, a way to give online through our website. If you click the Give Today button, you will find on there. It will take you to a PayPal site. You can also mail in uh, checks to our physical location at 501 North Clear Springs Road, Mustang, Oklahoma, 73064. Later this week, we're going to be rolling out uh, text to give. We'll also be switching our online giving over to to Vanco because that's what we're going to be doing our text to give through too. So you just have one place. So if you want to hold off on electronic giving for a couple of days, you you can do that. But your your gifts, you're off to be able to do this to to live stream and to be able to to pay our staff here during this time. And so we thank you very much uh, that that you do that. And we only ask that you. Uh, would consider doing that if you do not have a home church. If you have a home church already, please make sure that you are supporting them first during this time. We continue with uh, our next hymn, 709, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is. Thank you. 
Friends in Christ, I urge you all to lift up your hearts to God and pray with me as Christ our Lord has taught us and freely promised to hear us. God, our Father in heaven, look with mercy on us, your needy children on earth, and grant us grace that your holy name be hallowed by us and all the world through the pure and true teaching of your word and the fervent love shown forth in our lives. Graciously turn from us all false doctrine and evil living, whereby your precious name is blasphemed and profaned. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our prayer. prayer. May your kingdom come to us and expand. Bring all transgressors and those who are blinded and bound in the devil's kingdom to know Jesus Christ, your Son, by faith, that the number of Christians may be increased. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen us by your spirit according to your will, both in life and in death, in the midst of both good and evil things, that our own wills may be crucified daily and sacrificed to your good and gracious will. Into your merciful hands we commend Danny, Renee, Rhonda, Carla, Aaron, Pastor Trini, Lorena, Bev, Gordon, Carolyn, Julie, Pastor Dave, Alan, Alice, John, Pam, Leroy, Jamie, Charles, Jessica, Marquita, Terry, Janice, Marion, Charlie, Mabel, Mary, Claudia, Barry, Susan, Diane, Debbie, Janet, Richard, Alton, Renee, Dolores, Lauren, Terry, Marco, Kelly, Pastor Earl, Leona, Lori, Lori, Ned. And all who are in need, praying for them at all times, thy will be done. Lord, in your mercy. Grant us our daily bread, preserve us from greed and selfish cares, and help us to trust in you to provide for all our needs. We pray that you especially be with all those who travel, including Mark Kurtz, that you be with all those who are uh, in the military, especially Joseph Bivens, Nate Phillips, Christopher Bassinger, Joseph Bivens, Kat Cruz Bassinger, Jacob Perez, and Timothy Paines, and all those treating Uh, coronavirus patients, especially Peter Bivens, and with all those who have recently moved, and we give you thanks for uh, Betty Pugh, uh, Ivy Douglas's mother, for a successful move to Mustang, and we pray for her continued healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins, as we also forgive those who sin against us, so that our hearts may be at peace and may rejoice in a good conscience before you, that no sin may ever frighten or alarm us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lead us not into temptation, O Lord, but help us by your Spirit to subdue our flesh, to turn from the world and its ways, and to overcome the devil with all his wiles. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And lastly, O Heavenly Father, deliver us from all evil of both body and soul, now and forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We trust, O Lord, in your great mercy to hear and answer us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, by your great goodness, mercifully look upon your people that we may be governed and preserved evermore in body and soul through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, giver and perfecter of our faith, we thank and praise you for continuing among us the preaching of your gospel for our instruction and edification. Send your blessing upon the word which has been spoken to us, and by your Holy Spirit increase our saving knowledge of you, that day by day we may be strengthened in the divine truth and remain steadfast in your grace. Give us strength to fight the good fight and by faith to overcome all the temptations of Satan, the flesh and the world, so that we may finally receive the salvation of our souls. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Our closing hymn, 717, Eternal Father, Strong to Save. Just a couple of announcements, a reminder that we will be streaming services online, and that's the only way we're going to be doing services through April 30th. That's when the Save for In Place order is set to expire, um, and, and so that, that is what the directive we are following, and we are continuously uh, watching the news and, and updating and, and all those things, um, so if they were to change that order, uh, we will change along with it, I, I guess, is, is what I'm trying to say, um, which means that uh, Easter we will not be able to, to gather in the church. Now, we're, we're hoping to maybe do a drive-in parking lot service on Easter. We, we have a piece of technology on order, um, and if that comes in, we will, of course, be announcing that as, as soon as we get that. Um, we're, we're hoping to get that this week. Um, it also means that our special services for Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday we will not be able to have in person, so we won't be able to have communion uh, until we can gather in, in person. So just please keep up with that. Please stay safe. Follow the directions and the guidelines of, of your area of, of the country. Um, be sure to check in on uh, neighbors and, and shut-ins th through the phone as, as you might be their, their only lifeline. Continue to call them and, and let us pray for one another and remember that the Lord is with us and he is greater than death. In Christ's name, let us go in peace. Amen. Amen.